Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Hi, welcome to Silicon Valley Technology, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I have Lori Krein with me, and she's a local artist that's very popular doing green and sustainable artwork. Lori, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in all this fabulous artwork? Well, um, you know, when I was a little kid, I uh, used to like to draw and color and write poetry and um, so that's kind of when it all started, even when I was a little kid. And then as I got a little older, um, when it was time to go to college, I was really wanted to go to art school, but my parents encouraged me to go to business school instead. So um, I did that, and I took uh, as many art courses as I could on the side. So um, I'm basically self-taught. Uh, I've taken a lot of workshops, and um, I, I read books, and um, just sort of experiment with different te techniques and see what I can learn on my own. And um, also, my, my grandfather, um, who uh, he had a he was a metalsmith, so he was a what? He was a metalsmith. A metalsmith. So he okay. made things out of metal, and his workshop was was a really special place for me because there was all kinds of junk laying around and so little. So what kind of things out of metal? Um, well, he made menorahs and lanterns, and he also made artwork. So, so I was thinking shoe horses, but th not that kind no, of metal. No, 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 no. <laughs> he he uh, he would take little scraps pieces like drawer pulls and de little decorative pieces of, that he found, and he would sculpt them together, and he would make like a boot that would sit on a table or a big hand that were they were just all welded together. So, so that was really fascinating to me as a kid. He let me organize little pieces. So that kind of, that, that kind of got so me. He started. got you started. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. It was good. So how long have you been doing artwork then? Well, um, officially, oh, after I, I graduated from college, I worked in the business world for about 15 years. And then uh, when I had my two kids, I stayed home, and that's when I picked it back up again. So I'd say for about the past 14 years, um, I've been doing it on and off, full time, part time, back and forth. And, um, and so the past, uh, you know, it's, it's been building since then, um, and it's, it's just been really a great experience uh, learning. Two kids that are 14, and you look too 11. young to have the kids that are 14. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and then I also learned a lot um, a few years back. Uh, George Rivera, who's uh, at the Triton Museum, he did uh, a one-year, um, he would, every month, you could bring a piece of artwork to this uh, critique night. So I would go every month for a year, and I brought a piece of artwork, a different I'm piece. I'm sorry, where's the Triton? Is that San Francisco? Santa Clara. Santa Clara, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's where I learned a lot about composition and color and focal point and all the sort of technical things about art that I never learned because uh, I didn't go to school for that. So it was a, a huge um, jump for me in my learning, uh, you know, my, my learning curve. So after that year, I learned so much, and, and I just felt more... Um, able to do what I wanted to do and I felt more legitimate because before that I thought oh I didn't go to art school so you know not really a legitimate artist but after I learned from him all those uh, techniques then it, it really it really helped. Your artwork is amazing so you're definitely an artist. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit show us a little bit about your artwork and and how it's sustainable? Well sure um, Let's see where should I start. Um, I guess I could start with um, with this piece. Uh, this is I don't know if you can you can kind of see it, but it's a, just a little table that I found at a at a yard sale. It's for, beautiful for a couple bucks, and um, so the paper. So so um, the reason it's sustainable is because it would have just gone got thrown away. Who knows what what would have happened to it? But uh, I just I, I um, sanded it down and then I, I covered it with paper and varnished it. So I kind of brought something that was old and ugly and I gave it some new life. It actually it looks like wood to me, like different colors of wood or glass embedded in it, and it's just a couple dollars. Yeah. And then your time, which right. is a lot, and then this it's paper. It's paper. It's amazing. It's it's all different kinds of paper, and the paper that I use, I start when I first started doing collage, I made my own paper. And I've spent a whole summer using scrap uh, junk mail and dryer lint and uh, whatever I could find, uh, old wrapping paper. 
and I, I just went to my backyard and I put it in the blender. And dryer I, lint. Dryer lint. That's interesting. <laughs> I've heard of that before, but I didn't actually know that it was used as an application. I've heard of it. Well, the I've fibers keep the paper together. Bound together. It keeps it bound together. Yeah. You put a little bit of glue in there. but So I ended up with this big stack of handmade papers, and I didn't know what to do with it. So uh, I found this coffee table at a yard sale, and I covered it with the handmade papers. And I varnished it, and we used it as our coffee table for quite a while. Wow. So that's kind of how I got started doing this technique. Now, these papers I did not make. After uh, a while, I started to learn more about where I could get papers already made. And I found out that um, there is eco-friendly paper out there. Oh. And this is just a, a couple of pieces of it, and it's called Lot Lotka. It's L It's L-O-T-K-A. It's beautiful. And it feels really nice, and it comes in all different colors. And the reason that it's eco-friendly is because they use the bark of the latka tree, and it comes from Nepal. That's where they make it. So the bark falls off the tree, and that's what they use as the pulp to make this paper. And so I try to use that as much as I can since I found out about it. And I'm sorry, from where again? Nepal. Nepal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, it comes from pretty far away, but but it's, it's and when you wet it, it really molds to whatever it is that you're making. So it's really nice to work with. So this table here is, is with that this type of paper. I use this paper along with some other papers. So as what well. happened to the coffee table, the first one you made? Do you still have it? I, I <laughs> did you sell no, it? No, <laughs> uh, I did sell it. Yes, it, after we used it for a while, it's still in perfect shape because I put about five coats of varnish. On, on the surface. So, so you must do that in an outside shop or something? Um, yes, of yeah. course. You want to have a lot of ventilation Air. for those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that, that's uh, that. Now, uh, another piece I wanted to show you is, um, this is, a, I call it the eco-friendly inspirational art. I wonder if we can get a close-up of this. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's possible to to, to get a close-up, it's amazing, yeah. Um, so it says wish on it, and what it's made out of is the, this is the, that paper I was telling you about in the background, and the, the piece, uh, the background itself, the, the square part is a scrap piece of wood that I, I found, a, it was like a piece of an old drawer or something, and then the washers. Um, oh, those are washers, Those That's are washers, yeah. And I found the washers and this little piece of metal and these nails, um, these are old roofing nails, I found these at, a, at an estate sale, and it was a whole big box of them. And I don't know if the audience can see here. Are those numbers or Chinese? It's Chinese. Chinese writing. Uh, Chinese so writing. paper, yes. newspaper. It, I found a book of Chinese, just a Chinese book, and I just tear out pieces of it. I have no idea what it says. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's something good. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I just started, I, I, this is a, a box of washers, the, an a example, large washer, yeah. that I had found at, at an estate sale. and. I bought it, you know, it's like, oh, look at that cool stuff. And everybody's looking at me like, who is she? And <laughs> what is she doing with that stuff? So I figured one day I would use it, and, and this is kind of how. And you got a little um, mirror in there. Yes, yeah, a little And how did you there. make the wish? Is that something that you made I by hand? I did make that. Um, I okay. have a little stamp, and I stamp it into the clay, and then it's I paint clay. it. clay, okay. Yeah, to make it um, that color. And you've got all the paper on the background. All the paper on the background. It's kind of layered, and this is banana, uh, banana leaf paper. Interesting. And these nails that I use, um, my, this is kind of the same kind of nails my grandfather used to make menorahs. Aww. And there's a whole story behind that in the Holocaust, and he couldn't find um, anything to, they didn't have menorahs to, you know, or candelabras to, to do the Shabbat. So anyway, he made out of um, uh, whatever he could find, scraps of wood, and then later he used these nails to make That's so menorahs special. out of it. Yeah. So um, your family's taken sustainability Yes. Way long back. That's right. <laughs> finding things and, and making things out of it. Exactly. And you're carrying on that tradition. Yeah, a very resourceful family I have. So, um, and I want to show now, you. Oh, sorry. Let's, uh, is this bamboo here too? Or yes, that's is bamboo. Is it wood? Or it's, it's bamboo. Just, it's bamboo. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is just a beautiful piece. Thank you very much. So Thanks. something like this, um, what would, would you sell this for $100, $200? Um, not not quite. The smaller pieces go for twenty five dollars. Oh, that's the, a bargain. That's a bargain. I'm thinking you should raise your prices. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I will. Um, this is a larger one that I use sort of the sim similar similar um, elements. Uh, and the frame I I got again at a yard sale for like you know just a couple dollars, and it was just this old wooden frame, and I just adhered all the materials to it, and um, so that's just another I example. I have some two way mirror you can have. <laughs> it's a resource. Um, so there's many different ways to use. Now they call this upcycling because I'm using materials that were used for something else, mm -hmm. and now I'm using them for artwork. So upcycling. Upcycling. Interesting. Yes. 
And so uh, there's just met so many ways to use materials that are already out there to make artwork. It's, it's been really fun. Now this piece, I don't know if, if it's, uh, you can tell, but uh, I found a whole big box of stamps, canceled stamps oh, uh, at a yard sale. And I cut them up and I made a little landscape. 